Now we've all been told that plants are the ultimate health food, packed with vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. But what if I told you that plants are slowly killing you? Today I'll take you through the scientific evidence that made me stop eating plants entirely. From kidney stones to autoimmunity, from hidden toxins to hormone disruption. What you're about to hear will undoubtedly shock you. Now let's start with the most obvious one. Let's talk about anti-nutrients. Plants contain compounds called phytates. They bind onto minerals like iron or calcium, and they block your body's ability from actually absorbing them. A meta-analysis published in BMC Nutrition in 2016 showed that phytates in plant foods can reduce iron absorption by as much as 50 to 65% and calcium absorption by up to 30%. And because this was a meta-analysis, which is essentially the pooling together of multiple studies, it's one of the most reliable forms of evidence that we actually have. The takeaway? You can eat all of the leafy greens you want, but your body is not going to be actually able to uptake all of those minerals that you're trying to get. Now let's talk about oxalates. Um, foods like spinach, almonds and beets are absolutely loaded with them. Oxalates bind to calcium and they can form extremely painful kidney stones. A study published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1993 showed that people with higher oxalate intake had a significantly greater risk of developing calcium oxalate kidney stones. And that's, it's not just theory. A famous example is actually when actor uh, Liam Hemsworth followed a vegan diet for nearly four years. He would drink smoothies packed with oxalate high foods, things like spinach and almonds, and he would have this every single day. The result? He ended up in hospital with a calcium oxalate kidney stone that was so bad, he actually had to have surgery. I mean, he even admitted later that he would have to rethink his plant-heavy diet. Now, if this can happen to someone like Liam Hemsworth, something, someone who's that fit and healthy, it can happen to anyone. Now, let's talk about lectins. Lectins are another form of plant defense protein. They essentially latch onto the lining of your gut. They pry open those tight junctions in between your intestinal cells or your enterocytes, and they create what's often called leaky gut syndrome. This allows foreign proteins to slip into the bloodstream and trigger the immune system. And that is essentially the spark for all autoimmune disease. In fact, Autoimmune disease only really started skyrocketing when we started having much higher amounts of things like uh, lectin-heavy foods. Now you've all heard of a lectin before, but you probably didn't know what it was. The most famous lectin is gluten. Uh, in fact, a review published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2012 showed that gluten damages the gut lining and triggers immune reactions in genetically susceptible people. But here's the kicker. Gluten increases gut permeability in everyone, not just celiacs. That means gluten is harmful across the board. It's a spectrum. Everyone has some sort of gluten intolerance. It's just a matter of when your symptoms start to show up. Now let's talk about fiber. Now everyone thinks fiber is this miracle nutrient that's found in plants that supposedly helps everyone, but that could not be further from the truth. In fact, fiber often does more harm than good in multiple patients. A clinical trial published in Gastroenterology in 2014 showed that a low FODMAP diet, which essentially cuts out uh, very high fiber plant foods, would significantly reduce bloating, pain, and diarrhea in patients with IBS. And it's not even just uh, IBS sufferers that will see benefits. Ask anyone who follows a carnivore diet. They'll tell you that removing fiber from their diet, it completely improves their their constipation, their bloating, their bowels are better than ever before. And I, for one, also have experienced that. Then there are allergies. The most dangerous food allergies are not from steak. They're from plants. Peanuts, uh, tree nuts, soy, even fruits are responsible for the most fatal cases of anaphylaxis. In fact, a 29 study in uh, the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology found that 1-2% to of US adults have a peanut allergy. And peanuts are one of the leading causes of life-threatening allergic reactions every single day. Now compare that to meat, where true allergies are vanishingly rare. Plants also come with invisible risks through contamination. Crops are routinely sprayed with pesticides and insecticides. These chemicals are literally designed to kill life. 
So do you really think they're not having any adverse effects on you? Evidence from the US Agricultural Health Study has shown that long-term pesticide exposure is actually linked to much higher risks of cancers, cancers like non-Hodgkin's and also prostate cancer. So when you're eating that salad, you're not just eating the lettuce, you're also killing yourself. You're, you're literally dosing yourself with chemical res residues which are designed to kill. And then there are plant hormones, uh, soy, and legumes are really rich and, and high in isoflavones. These are plant estrogens that also bind to human estrogen receptors, and they can disrupt uh, hormone balances in both men and women. In women, uh, you'll find that it can affect the menstrual cycle and it can also affect fertility. And for men, it can even reduce their testosterone activity uh, significantly. A clinical trial published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism showed that patients with subclinical hypothyroidism, so patients who have hypothyroidism but are not symptomatic at that time, when they would eat these foods high in isoflavones, they would be three times more likely to go into full-blown hypothyroidism or symptomatic hypothyroidism. And when you combine the fact that they're likely eating goitrogens that are found in plants, that's going to massively impact your thyroid function. And this is exactly why you've probably heard of a lot of stories of patients with thyroid disease. They go carnival and their thyroid disease completely goes away. And also, let's not forget about mold toxins. Rains and peanuts are notorious for harboring aflatoxins. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but they are essentially the most potent and natural carcinogens known to man. In fact, a, a study done in China, I believe Kidong, showed that reducing aflatoxin exposure in a population led to a dramatic drop in liver cancer disease, uh, even uh, taking into account uh, things like uh, the, the hepatitis vaccines. And that's not theory, that's real world epidemiology. Now, plant advocates often argue that small doses of plant toxins can be beneficial, a concept called hormesis. They say that these compounds stress the body just enough to make it stronger. Sort of like exercising a muscle by adding stress to it and letting it repair and become even bigger. So it is technically, it is real, it is a concept. But what's the safe dose? I mean, where's the line between uh, the potential benefit and harm? And have you even considered uh, cumulative exposure? One spinach smoothie today probably won't kill you. But what happens if you join Quant every day for a year or four years like Liam Hensworth did? You're not just getting the nutrients, you're also loading your system with oxalates, lectins, phytates and other compounds that add up over time. So here's my final note. If you do eat vegetables, please don't suddenly stop eating them overnight. Your gut microbiome is used to feeding on vegetable fibre, so if you completely remove it overnight, then the bacteria in your stomach will become confused and they'll start to digest your own inner lining instead. So, transition carefully, ideally under the guidance of a qualified doctor. People like Dr. Abs, uh, Sean Baker, Anthony Chafee, Ken Berry are all fantastic resources if you want to check out their pages. And if you want help directly, you're more than welcome to book a consult with me by the link in my description. But now I want to hear from you. Have you already given up plants? What benefits have you found after giving them up? Comment below and share your story. I want to hear it and so do millions of others who are searching for a way to end their illness and end their ailments. And guys, make sure to subscribe because in my next video, I'll be talking about the, the real life evidence about whether fruit is actually good for you or not. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.